Hi everybody! I have a lot of comics. I'm really backed up, so I'm going to do some more reviews. This time around, I'm going to do a little something different. I have a whole bunch of indie comics to read. Now, I've been talking lately in the last few videos about maybe uh, looking elsewhere besides just simply Marvel and DC uh, for my superhero action fun fest fix. And uh, I found a few books here and there. Oh, uh, and I'd like to share them with you, the YouTube audience. Now, first off, I'm going to start with Primal Paper Comics. Uh, this is the first issue of Willpower. Now, Primal Paper, you may have uh, remember me talking about them. They're actually a comic company out of my area uh, of, of Virginia, uh, Norfolk, Virginia Beach. And uh, they produce the Skyrocket comic, uh, as well as 41. And uh, the new Baku series, which uh, is Mike Fettel Raleigh's uh, new book. Uh, I talked about that uh, on Comic News with uh, Duke and Manos. Uh, this is a new series, uh, brand new, n number one, from Vince White. He writes and uh, draws this uh, comic. Now, what starts with here, let's see, let me show you the cover here. Uh, I'm digging this very epic superhero uh, kind of uh, design here, as well as I uh, love Willpower's uh, symbol uh, of the fist. Uh, what's going on? Well, it opens with a prologue of uh, this epic hero being described. Uh, and uh, apparently it's this godlike character standing over uh, these kids in sort of a Greekish, you know, gods kind of uh, scenario. And he, I mean, he's gigantic here. And by the way, I'm not sure why these kids would want to be hanging around under his skirt. But hey, that's up to them. Uh, and then we cut over here to this statue even bigger than he is of our hero, and apparently it looks far flung into the future of some sort. Um, and uh, the kids ask him to talk more about, uh, you know, his earlier days, so we cut to the beginning of the story. Uh, Willpower is this uh, young man whose father is a brilliant scientist who, who uh, works in this huge, huge lab uh, with experiments that are very super collider-ish, let's just say. and. Uh, he ha it's uh, the lab of Jonathan Power. He has this machine, this giant machine that can change density. Either it can decrease density or increase density. And uh, let's see. What happens is uh, people invade. And these kind of these mysterious uh, black shadowy guys right here uh, invade and uh, apparently cause a disruption. He throws his son, uh, Will, into this chamber that's supposed to protect uh, uh, him from, uh, from the change, and it goes kablooey in a big way. Uh, it changes the universe, apparently. It makes the universe uh, less dense. And uh, I think, let's see, and in the very near future, I'm not sure how far in the future, uh, Will wakes up. And he is suddenly the strongest, most powerful being in the universe. Uh, because the, the density has decreased all over. Uh, and I think, I think his density has actually increased. Uh, we start out with... And he is instantly attacked by bad guys. Now, what I like about this book is it has a very early 90s kind of Marvel image kind of quality. But in a good way. Uh, I feel like he is... Uh, without talking to him about this. I feel uh, Vince is a big fan of uh, Eric Larson. It does have that kind of over-the-top uh, kind of energy uh, to it. And I can really tell on each page how much he really loves uh, this character and this story. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about this. It's a great first start. Uh, I'm enjoying this book a lot. And uh, I can't wait for issue two. I think this is going to be a bi-monthly book, uh, from what I understand. Uh, I highly recommend it. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of this video, uh, so you can find out how you can uh, order yourself a copy of Willpower Number One. Uh, I'm going to give it five RAM chips. Uh, I'm liking this one a lot. Okay, now, hey, Godzilla man, I'm a big Godzilla fan. If you haven't noticed, occasionally my uh, Godzilla toys uh, that pop up in the videos uh, here every so often. Uh, this is uh, from let's see, IDW. Much respect, IDW. You've been uh, putting together some uh, good product lately. Uh, this is written by Eric Powell and Tracy Marsh and Phil Hester. Not bad. Uh, doing the art. 
And uh, we open with a uh, quick scene at the beach where these kids are kind of, maybe, I think, destroyed by Godzilla popping up out of the, the sand, out of nowhere. Uh, what's interesting, it doesn't really give us any hints or explanation. Uh, and it feels like this is the first time Godzilla has appeared in this world as he uh, tears through Japan and uh, is systematically attacked by planes, which uh, brings on the nuclear device. It's like we have this really quick jump to bring on the nuclear device, but uh, there they go. And apparently it gives him the fire breath, uh, maybe for the first time. Um, and then we cut to uh, DC where you know, Obama's already kind of stressing out anyway, and that's one last thing he needed. Um, uh, it's pretty tongue-in-cheek written. Oh, and by the way, uh, they did a cute little thing with uh, comic book stores. I think they sent out to a number of comic book stores like, Hey, we... <clears throat> I forgot how it worked, but uh, uh, they were offered the chance to get an alternate cover uh, of this issue with Godzilla stepping on their store. And... Uh, for fun, they put all the alternate covers here, so you can at least take a look at them. They're uh, all over the country. Uh, my store I go to was offered, but I, I think they didn't take take it up, uh, which is too bad, because uh, that would be neat. But uh, I like this a lot. Now, I'm, I'm reading this issue, and of course, unfortunately, this issue came out weeks after the Japanese earthquake. So it is one of those things that just kind of is in the back of my head as I read this, which is interesting. I mean, after all, the first Godzilla film was made 10 years after uh, we dropped the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And, of course, that was, you know, very much influential in that story. Uh, of course, this was already produced, and this is produced by Americans, uh, for American audience, but still, when I read it, it does, I don't know, it does make things a little more uh, dire, uh, let's just say. It's like watching Cloverfield, like, a week after 9-11, I don't know. It's just that kind of thing. Uh, it's not bad. It's a little simplistic, but I, uh, well, it's, you know, to be honest, it's kind of stupid to complain about simplistic in a Godzilla story. Uh, I dug it quite a bit. I'm going to give this four RAM chips, and uh, as a Godzilla fan, I'm definitely uh, going to keep reading. And Jennifer Blood, number two, from uh, Garth Ennis and uh, Adrian uh, Batista. And boy, that's a great way to start a comic. A uh, little butt sex tribute to uh, to Titanic, and you know, yeah, you can only go up from there. Uh, well, this one involves a deeper uh, uh, kind of dig into the character of Jennifer. Uh, I don't think she really gives a fuck about her husband. I mean, not at all. Uh, it almost feels like her whole family life is kind of a cover, uh, and she is plotting, of course. I think the big deal is that these uh, gangsters she's going after are connected and there's some sort of revenge. This isn't simply uh, killing bad guys because bad guys are evil. I think this is some kind of revenge plot going on. Uh, pretty interesting stuff here. I'm going to give this four ram chips. Uh, Gold Digger. I mentioned this also on, uh, on Comic News with uh, Duke. Uh, this is my second mention of Comic News. Uh, this issue... Actually, I'm not sure if this issue exactly, but um, uh, Gold Digger has been an indie book for 20 years, and I'm very impressed by that. I was just thinking, um, once I discovered this, that uh, how many books that came out by Marvel and DC in, uh, was it 90, 91? 91. How many books from Marvel and DC came out in 91? New series, and how many of those books are still around? And this one is. I'm very deeply impressed. This is issue 125. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the book, uh, it is about Gina Diggers, who is a archaeologist. And of course, in science fiction uh, action, archaeologists have all the fun. Uh, and uh, she is teamed up with her uh, sister, who is also, let's see, she is sort of her bodyguard and protector. Uh, and her sister is also a wear cheetah or something. Um, and she's huge, too. She's like maybe a foot taller than her and everything. Uh, that's Brittany Diggers. And, uh, see, the archaeologist and her name is Diggers. Get it? Um, anyway, this, uh, adventure... Now, the, pro now the thing is, I'm jumping into this series, uh, 
so there's a lot of backstory going on. I imagine there's been a buildup uh, of this. Uh, the Dragon Queen definitely needs their help in regarding uh, to getting an, gaining an object, uh, but at the same time they're competing against a villain named Dreadwing, who is uh, trying to stop them and has even created like dark shadow versions of them. Uh, pretty action-packed, nice little energy. It's got kind of a manga feel to it. I know a lot of people don't care much for the American uh, version of uh, manga, uh, but you know, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, comics are comics. So you know, and I really don't give a shit really of your style. Uh, I just kind of appreciate it. Uh, and it's nice, nice, brightly colored too. This has been, it's been an engaging book for uh, years, from what I understand. Uh, and uh, it's nice to take a look. I'm going to read this story arc and see how it goes. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll keep reading, but uh, it's not too bad. Uh, I'm going to give this four ranch chips. And, oh, I didn't even mention, uh, the creator of this book is Fred Perry, does the art and the uh, scripting. And now, back to probably maybe the biggest book of uh, this group. I don't know, Godzilla was huge. Uh, this is Green Hornet, issue, where are we? 13, by Phil Hester and Jonathan Lau. We're still knee-deep in that uh, crazy, crazy... Uh, Catholic uh, cult uh, of crime, uh, where one of the uh, big leaders uh, his head knocked off there. Uh, apparently that statue that's been in the background actually is somebody in a costume and is really fucking scary. Uh, a good number of the, uh, uh, of the, is of the issue is uh, spent with Cato and uh, Green Hornet discussing you know, basically how to fight, really. And uh, there's some really great dialogue that goes on between the two of them. Uh, and then you realize, uh, after that conversation's over, that they had a guy in a trunk, which is kind of funny. Uh, meanwhile, we cut to Cato, uh, I mean, adult Cato, who is played by Bruce Lee. He is dealing with some shit to, over in Japan. He uh, wants uh, the crime bosses in Japan to leave them alone. And uh, I think that's probably going to be building as the next uh, story arc. Oh, uh, really cool stuff. Uh, I love this series a lot. This is Five Ram Chips. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, the movie's over, it's come and gone, but you know what? This book's worth getting. Uh, I love it a lot. I think that's about it for now, and until next time, push the button, Lindsay.